Good evening and welcome. I am Amarachi Ubani. Tonight, President Muhammadu Buhari gives strong warning to the police hierarchy to not extort youth as seeking recruitment into the police force. Nigeria now generates over 6,000 megawatts of electricity. PDP in Anambra State writes Governor Willie Obiano challenges him to tender reports on expenditure made by his government. And Greek Prime Minister Alexis Tsipras announces his resignation and calls for an early election. And on Business News Tonight, President Muhammad Buhari appoints Dr. Babatunde Paula as the new chairman of the Federal Inland Revenue Service. And on Sports News Tonight, rugby excluded from sports events to feature the 2015 All-Africa Games. Today, Vice President uh, Professor Yemi Oshibaja convened the National Economic Council meeting at the State House in Abuja with state governors in attendance. Deliberations at the meeting centered on the ongoing economic restructuring of the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, the NNPC, and other agencies, and on the formulation of new economic policies. Our State House correspondent, Shukuma Onekusi, reports. <laughs> President and state governors who form the National Economic Council break down on several economic issues, ranging from the exchange rate of the Naira to what is development in the power sector. For over six hours, the vice president and state governors who form the National Economic Council brainstorm on several economic issues, ranging from the exchange rate of the Naira to latest developments in the power sector since the inception of the Buhari administration. Council was informed that there is overall increase in power supply by 29% as at the first six weeks of this administration compared to the last weeks of the previous uh, administration, which is a, a significant uh, development. So the power generation reached a level of 6,662 megawatts, uh, 4,662 megawatts as of July 29, 2015, which is really a significant uh, increase. And to increase the transparency in the sector, a website has been developed that is accessible to all, uh, that's www.nsisters.org. The central bank governor was said to have briefed them on why the Naira has been unstable in the money market and what he is doing to address the situation. CBN governor told the council that it has, done, it has come up with some policy response to address the situation, which include specific intervention in the foreign exchange market to stabilize rates, Cessation of foreign currency cash deposit in banks, closure of CBN official foreign window, and uh, reclassification of eligible goods and services to the DAS window. The National Economic Council is worried that states are very much indebted to banks and they need to address the fiscal imbalance. Out of 22 states that have applied for restructuring, only 11 have scaled through with the documentation urging others to hasten up. Current excess crude proceeds stand at about $2.207 billion as of August 2015. And of course, this is uh, what the Council expected to, uh, to get details on, and they were clearly spelled out by the Permanent Secretary, Minister of Finance. NEC also looks into the excess crude account and what has been generated as of August 2015. NEC was given an update on the position of the management of the excess crude account for which all necessary agencies are being invited and audit firms appointed. They are expecting the full reports in the next meeting. NEC is also pleased by the restructuring going on in the NNPC. The group managing director is said to have assured that the restructuring will be transparent to make it more profitable. The group managing director was said to have asked state governors to partner with the NMPC to secure its assets across the country. Chukuma Onwekusi, Channels Television News.
The President, Mohamed Buhari, today issued a strong warning to the Minister of Foreign Affairs and the Police Service Commission that he will not tolerate any irregularities or extortion of money from unemployed Nigerians in the proposed recruitment into the police force. The President, who convened a meeting of the top hierarchy of the Nigeria police at the presidential villa, said applicants having to pay bribes before being accepted into the force is totally unacceptable. He told those in charge of recruitment and training to be above board. According to the president, you must ensure that the recruitment process is transparent and those who will conduct the exercise must be above board and it should not be heard that they received gratification. On the stagnation of policemen on a rank for many years, the president counseled the police force to review the current structure of the force and make recommendations on how the problems can be solved. The president had recently approved the recruitment of 10,000 additional policemen and women. Also today, President Mohamed Buhari affirmed his conviction that the end of Boko Haram insurgency is in sight, given the added vigor with which the war against the terrorist sect is being conducted in Nigeria by the military and her allies. During a meeting with the Chad Minister of Foreign Affairs, Mr. Musa Faki Mohammed, who is also a special envoy of President Idris Deby of Chad, President Buhari said that with higher morale among troops in the front line against Boko Haram and their improved logistics, equipment and training, a rapid end to the insurgency could be expected. The president, however, wanted, warned that Nigeria and Chad must be prepared to make more sacrifices to end the scourge of Boko Haram since they're at the very heart of the insurgency. Remunerations of Nigerian lawmakers have been raising some dust following the publication of figures by an online medium, Premium Times, detailing the amounts earned by National Assembly members. On a global scale, Nigerian lawmakers are also reported to be among the highest earners. In our next report, our correspondent, Charles Aruka, examines the figures of earnings of federal lawmakers in the light of the impact on the nation's economy. On July the 10th, President Muhammad Buhari announced that he would be taking a massive 50% cut of his 14 million 58,820 naira annual salary. The Vice President Yemi Oshimbajo also told the same line, accepting to take only half of his official annual remuneration as well. However, it appears it is the earnings of the country's federal lawmakers that have set tongues wagging. Over time, various figures have appeared on both social and traditional media, but it is the breakdown recently published by online publication Premium Times that appears to be stirring a hornet's nest. The medium attributes its figures to the Revenue Mobilization, Allocation and Fiscal Commission. An analysis of the figures estimates that the annual remuneration of each of the 360 members of the House of Representatives amounts to 18.26 million naira. Each of the 109 senators is set to earn 19.66 million naira per annum. A breakdown of the figures reveals that the annual basic salary of each senator is 2.03 million naira, while his counterpart in the House of Representatives earns 1.99 million naira. Now that is the tip of the iceberg, considering sundry other allowances earned by the lawmakers. Some of these include furniture allowance, which is 150% of basic salary, accommodation allowance 150%, constituency allowance 125% for a senator and 75% for a House of Representatives member, and motor vehicle, fueling and maintenance 50%, wardrobe and utilities 25% each, while newspaper and recess allowances 10% each of basic salary. Everything put together, the grand total of the National Assembly's annual wage bill amounts to a princely 7.79 billion naira annually, with senators accounting for 1.92 billion naira and the House of Representatives 8.57 billion naira. Our lawmakers' pay is huge and excessive and unnecessary and especially given our economy, given the poverty, the widespread poverty in our country, given the challenges we are facing, given their productivity, for instance, since uh, they were inaugurated, you can count 
on your fingers how many times they've uh, sat. No committees in place. They're doing nothing. It's one recess after the other. So they really, we really don't think that they deserve what they earn. However, a former senator insists that the National Assembly does not determine the humongous amounts earned by the lawmakers. The National Assembly members, senators and House of Representatives members, do not fix whatever, you know, amount, whether salaries or emoluments due to They do not. Who fixes it? Is the it, is it, is it national, I mean, the, 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 the revenue allocation, um, mobilization and fiscal commission. That is the body. That is the body constitutionally empowered. Because you see, we need to correct the impression as if members, whether in the House of Representatives or in the Senate, they fix this you know, amount for themselves. No! Even on a global scale, Nigerian lawmakers compare very favorably to the highest earning lawmakers, with a Nigerian earning $189,000 per annum, second only to Australia with $201,000 per annum, but ahead of Italy and the U.S. at $182,000 and $174,000 annually, respectively. Now, that's far ahead of South African lawmakers at $105,000 or British members of parliament at $104,000 per annum. By comparison, a circular released by the National Salaries, Incomes and Wages Commission in 2013 shows that the minimum wage for a Nigerian public servant is a mere 242,000 naira per annum. Taking into consideration economic factors like the gross domestic product and compared with the annual budgets of government ministries and parastatals, the remunerations of federal legislators alone would naturally constitute a more than decent burden for the nation's economy in the long run. Charles Aruka for Channels Television News. In part two after the break, staying with the story on the lawmakers' jumbo pay, joining us tonight is the senator representing Ogun Central constituency, Senator Larry Tejosho. Please stay with us.